This is the Elite Force Hader. However, this is the Umarex HDR50. So notice the HDR and notice the H8R paintball revolver, airsoft revolver. But why am I showing you this? I'll show you why once I open this box. Oh, and by the way, very nice box. So, what do we get in the box? Now, as I have come to expect from Elite Force slash Umarex, the manual will be a pretty decent manual, quite comprehensive. If you remember the unboxings I did for my Glocks, you'll know what I'm talking about. Anyway, elephant in the room, not that easily available in the UK yet, but from the United States of America, easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Now, would you look at that bad boy? This is why I needed to get my hands on one of these. Just look at the design. It looks so modern, so different, so beefy, so meaty. So let's get it out. Oh, and by the way, there should be extra. Yep, there they are, excellent. They are quite generous when it comes to these bad boys. Now, in the manual, it refers to these as magazines. Some people call them discs, some people call them clips, but the manual says magazines. So that's what I'm going to call them. Now, from the get-go, let me just show you something with these magazines. Now, when you put the BBs in, by the way, you get 10 slots, okay? So you get 10 shots out of one of these magazines before you have to swap it for one of those. And what is important to note is which way you put this in the revolver. This revolver already has one mag installed. So in total, you get five of these bad boys. Now. The way to tell which way around to load your BBs, if I show you the mag that's already in the revolver, you can just about see the holes at the back of the mag. It's the smaller holes needs to be facing the rear of the revolver and the larger holes faces the front. Let me demonstrate by showing you this handy lever right there. This is so futuristic to me anyway. <laughs> you simply push that forward and then up that locks into place, and then you can push your mag out towards the left. Nice. So I'll just pop that out completely. Let's get some BBs in there and there. Can you see how that part of the mag has larger holes than the back? Right, there's a few ways you can do this. You can get a speed loader and just pop one BB in per hole like that but the only problem is when you use a speed loader another one wants to pop out immediately but look it's falling in as if by cue to one of the other holes so yeah you can continue using the speed loader like that or you can just put them in one by one using a speed loader you were born with nice now because this got shipped from the USA it has this orange tip. Don't worry, I'll be removing that soon. So, it's a CO2 powered revolver, so to get the CO2 in, by the way, the CO2 sits in your hand grip and you simply get a finger or thumb in that groove right there and remove the panel. And another cool feature is that you have this built-in tool that you use to loosen the base So you can pop your CO2 cartridge in and then tighten up the base until you hear that familiar little hiss. 
Oh, very subtle hiss on that one, but it's in. Pop the panel back on. Oh, I'm getting excited. Okay, so stop. A little something I need to show you. Schoolboy error for me. When you put this panel back on, make sure it's on properly. Don't leave that little lip that you can see on screen right now in the circle. That shouldn't be on the outside. That should be on the inside. But nonetheless, it won't fall off anyway. But make sure you do it properly. I do rectify it later. But in the meantime, let's continue. I've still got this lever in the open and locked position. So what I want to do now is install this mag, but again, remembering that the BBs go in facing forwards. And then you lock the mag in. Now, before I go any further, let me show you more of the features on this. And let me start with the safety, because you're probably thinking, wait, this thing is armed and ready. However, right here is your safety switch. So it's already in the forward position, meaning, look, the hammer cannot go back. On the top here, you have a handy little rail system and one beneath. So I would suggest a nice little O light or any light of your choice will go on the lower rail and some sort of optics on the top or on either a nice little cam. Now, as I have already shown you, I absolutely love the design on this. To me, it looks so futuristic. I'm loving the thickness right there of this. I'm loving the trades, your hater trades. So this is specifically the hater six millimeter super magnum. You see, you can't just say super magnum. You've got to go super magnum. <laughs> and then take a look at this gorgeous grip, the ergonomics of it all. Nice bit of texture right there. The Elite Force logo. And you've got some more texturizing right there, which is good because that will cater for your thumb, depending on whether you're a righty or a lefty. Then on the other side, you've got some more Elite Force branding there. And of course, the logo on the other side of the grip. And then as we move along, you've got your six millimeter caliber markings there and the F and the small print. <laughs> Oh, and there, look, it's got its own serial number. Right now, let's get to the elephant in the room. Before I go for the chrono and shooting test of the Elite Force hater, um, HDR50? Oh my gosh. I'm only doing this just to show you. In my eyes, Elite Force and Umarex are one and the same. Some people will tell you no. Two complete different entities, uh, whatever. But look at this beauty right there. Uh, Elite Force, uh, Umarex. Okay then, maybe two different entities working together. Anywho, look at this bad boy. <laughs> okay, disclaimer, this is not an airsoft gun. I mean, look at the front of that barrel. You can see that something rather bigger would come flying out of there. But would you look at the similarities between this and this? Now, straight away, apart from the visible hammer, you can see some subtle differences. For example, on this HDR50 T4E, the mag is in the front, so it's at the front of the simulated cylinder. On the Airsoft one, it's at the back. You can see the similarities right there. Obviously one being the HDR50 T4E and one being the hater. Look, this one's a bit more beefier, a bit bigger. It has to be. Look at the size of the mag on this one and the size of the mag on the Airsoft one. So, okay, this is a paintball marker but it also doubles up as a home defense revolve. What the hell? Anyway, I would suggest, <laughs> depending on what country you get this paintball marker from, there are certain rounds that you can put in this other than paintballs that make it a home defense system. Now, in some countries that may be illegal. 
in many others, no. It's just a bigger version of an airsoft gun. Awesome. And you know what? Because this is a paintball one, I wouldn't dare do a review of this on my airsoft channel. So if I do end up doing a review of this, it will be on my Mike's Tech and Toys channel. Link in the video description. Shameless plug. So I've got 0.20 gram BBs in here, industry standard, although I believe recommended is 0.25s. So let's see what we get. Oh, and might I add, it's a single action or double action trigger. So for example, I don't need to pull the hammer back to fire it. I can pull the trigger from this position. Let's do this. 273. 361, what a jump. <laughs> now from that low figure to that high figure, you gotta take into consideration, it's a new CO2 cartridge going into a new revolver. Now, it should be a bit more consistent. 336, or you could call that 337. 336 again. 335, now there you go, you've got the idea. That's pretty decent and a lot better than what I've seen in the past from this revolver. Okay, let me just put this back on safe. I've only used about five shots from one of the mags, so I've refilled it with another five BB, so we're back up to 10. Nice. So, as you can see, my shots pretty much started off all over the place. Well, I say all over the place. That's pretty good groupings, to be fair. Yeah, probably only one or two managed to get in that inner circle. But again, this is a budget revolver that looks so much more expensive than what it actually is. And to me, that's some proper groupings there. I would say, with the exception of, where is it? There's one that went way off. I say way off, that's not too bad <laughs> in the nine circle. Actually, to be fair, that shot in the nine circle, between that and the shot in the 10 circle, that is still just within two inches. That's not bad at all. So there you go, people. This is the Elite Force Hater. Ha, only kidding. This is the Elite Force Hater. The budget airsoft revolver that I think should lose the title of budget. The only reason I can see this being budget is the price. Oh my gosh, this thing is cheap. Well, in America it is. Check the video description. But you know what? In terms of the design, this thing is gorgeous. Apart from this orange thing right here which is an American thing, I think, and maybe some other countries, but definitely not a UK thing. But again, I bought this from the United States of America, but it will be coming off. Yeah, so in terms of, okay, range, I can see why they could call this a budget version. The range isn't brilliant. You're not gonna get like something you would get from like a proper gas blowback airsoft pistol. This will fall short a little. And unfortunately, when it comes to hop up, it ain't got no hop up. <clears throat> Sorry, it hasn't got no hop up. Sorry, it hasn't got any hop up. So apart from that, my accuracy test wasn't bad at all. It was quite good. But again, recommended slightly heavier BBs if you're gonna use this bad boy 
outside. So yeah, I can see again why it would be called a budget thing or a more affordable revolver. But I'm telling you, to me, this looks better than most airsoft revolvers out there if you're into that more futuristic look. If you're more into the more classic looks in a revolver, oh, she's gorgeous. Then this probably isn't for you. This, my people, is the Airsoft Elite Force Hater, sorry, <clears throat> Hater Revolver. Check the video description for more info and remember, if you're still interested in this bad boy, I don't know if you noticed, it's a lot thicker here as well than this one. But anyway, if you're more interested in this bad boy, make sure you're subscribed to my Mike's Tech and Toys YouTube channel, because I may just do a review of this over there. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next time on the Airsoft Mike YouTube channel. But you can also catch me on Instagram too, because sometimes I upload the odd little video here and there, some behind the scenes stuff, some little extra bits, you know, and even sneak previews of future videos to come. Like I did one for this. If you're not on Instagram, you didn't know I was going to do this today, did you? And again, if you're not following me on my other social media, especially Instagram, <laughs> My little Robocop special for the Auto 9 Airsoft Pistol. Ha! That's coming soon. But there's a tiny little behind the scenes clip over on Instagram. Do you get my point now? Good. Thanks for watching.